Fog FPV, about a year ago I did my first vlog review of the UR UAV UR65, one of my favorite brushless whoops, and I still fly it. I started the channel to give back to the community and to provide a perspective of someone that is older that is new to FPV. My goal was to promote you are never too old to learn something new. So it's only fitting that I do an after the box is open a year later of the UR UAV UR85 HD. Bushido, quite a mouthful. Uh, so um, I'll show you what you get in the box and I'll quickly go through the specs. Get this nice little carrying case, which I appreciate. Um, you get the Caddx V2 OSD controller board where you can set up uh, the um, Caddx Turtle V2 settings. Um, you get the instruction pamphlet here, which is very comprehensive. Uh, you do get some spare props, and you get a battery strap, and you get this XT30 to PH2 um, conversion cable in case you want to run 1S batteries. Um, you do get a prop removal tool. You do get a screwdriver, and then also in this package you get some spare screws. In addition, you get the um, a 300 milliamp hour um, battery that's uh, 3S, and then finally you get the, the Bushido itself. So I'll quickly go through the specs. So the wheelbase is 85 millimeters. Um, here is the weight that I measured with and without a battery. The motors are 1102 um, 9000 kV motors. They're ball bearing motors. Uh, the flight controller is one that's used in a lot of models, including the trash can, the Eachine trash can. Um, it uh, is the Crazy BF4 Pro V2 which is the all-in-one flight controller and ESC with the built-in um, SPI receiver. Um, I, uh, it does not come with the 100 microfarad capacitor to limit uh, voltage spikes. Um, I did put one of those on order. I have not installed it yet. Um, you know, I haven't had any issues to date with this. So um, hopefully I won't. Um, if I get a chance, I probably will put on the other pigtail with the 100 microfarad capacitor that I that I purchased. Uh, it does um, again have the Cadex Turtle V2. I like it that it has the the canopy has uh, adjustable camera angle. Uh, the VTX is switchable between 25 milliwatt and 200 milliwatt milliwatts. Um, the uh, um, VTX does support smart audio, so you can change your channels and power levels via the OSD. Um, it does, uh, again, I have the FR Sky version that does support D8 and D16 modes. Um, it came in D8 mode. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in D8 mode. I mean, I do hear that there are issues running it in D16. I've never confirmed that, but just to be safe, um, I've always been running the uh, Crazy Bees in uh, D8 mode. Supposedly, it, if you run it in D16, and again, I've never experienced this on uh, some of the other quads I have running in D16 that are Crazy B F3 flight controllers, where you get a lockup and it looks like you're, you're getting a fail safe. Uh, but just to be safe, I went ahead and set mine up for D8 mode. So uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a setup, which is not a complete tutorial, but rather um, the changes I made from the stock settings. The first being to upgrade to Betaflight 4.04 because it had a, a early beta version of Betaflight 4.0 that is not compatible with the latest version of Beta Flight Configurator. I also made some minor tweaks that I think improved the flight characteristics, although the stock settings were, were okay, um, but uh, I did make some tweaks there, which I'll show you and go through that. So I'll quickly go through the minor changes I made from the stock settings. Uh, I did upgrade 
like I stated to beta flight 4.04, they had a beta version that wasn't compatible with the most recent version of the configurator. So I recommend that you do that. Everything was set up uh, pretty correctly. Uh, the gyro update frequency and PID loop frequency were correct. Uh, the only change I made here was setting the maximum arm angle to 180 degrees. So that if it gets stuck in a tree, I can arm it and uh, blip the throttle and hopefully get out of the, the tree. The other thing I did uh, do was turn on the RX lost and RX set uh, so that we can use D shot commands on a switch to uh, um, so I could uh, use the beacon functionality. But uh, other than that, didn't make any other changes here. I'm going to the power and battery monitoring tab. Didn't make any changes here. Um, I felt it was set up correctly. I'm not going to be charging the battery to high voltage, so I didn't change the maximum cell voltage. Um, as far as the PID tuning, these are the PIDs that I came up with. Uh, what I typically do is use the community presets for Betaflight 4.0 um, and then modify from there. Um, so that's what I did in this case. Uh, the factory PIDs were, were good. Um, I felt like these are a little better for flying acro and getting good video. Uh, so uh, you can see my flight with that, um, with these settings. Um, I did also change the the feed forward settings. Uh, the main thing here is uh, in the uh, filter settings and uh, I just use the community presets on that. Like right here for this size quad, you really need to change the gyro low pass dynamic max cutoff frequency on this to 750. Uh, but uh, you, you can uh, see what the uh, community filter settings are there. Um, as far as receiver, you know, it's uh, I set it to my standard mapping, which is AETR1234. And they already had the uh, RC smoothing set up correctly. Uh, let's see, um, you know, this is my uh, preference as far as how I set up my switches on AUX. Um, you know, I have uh, the mode on AUX1 and the arm on AUX2. And again, uh, the stock settings were fine this is just the way I always set things up and you know, I do have a flip over after crash on uh, aux 3 and then also on aux 3 um, I have a beeper set up uh, so as far as the OSD um, I just use their OSD settings um, I mean it's uh, there's quite a few things turned on probably need to turn some of this off to clean up the screen but um, I thought it was, uh, um, you know, they had a, a fairly good setup for the position of the, the items here. Um, so didn't make any changes to that. I might turn off some of these and just to uh, make uh, room for more of the screen versus all the indicators here for the telemetry stuff. And other than that, um, that's it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, some flight footage and then we'll go into my final thoughts on the UR UAV UR 85 HD
here are my final thoughts on the UR, UAV, UR85 HD Bushido. I think at $135.99, it's a good value as compared to other Cine Whoops in this class. Uh, they typically run uh, retail about $150 to $160. Also, it's lightweight as compared to other 85 millimeter um, Cine Whoops in this class. Uh, for example, the Beta 85 XHD. Uh, because of its lightweight, I think it flies great on 3S. On 2S, it's fine for capturing smooth video, but if you're gonna be doing power loops or other acro maneuvers, uh, 3S is definitely better. Um, you could see from my flight, um, I was bottoming out um, on 2S on power loops. Uh, but if you're just going slow, um, then 2S is fine. I do like that the camera angle is very adjustable from very flat for doing a smoother video capture to a little more aggressive angles if you're trying to do some acro, uh, light acro flying. I think the video quality is a lot better than I thought it would be with the stock props. Although I think I'm gonna be trying the Vaughn 2x2x4 props and uh, go with props out and see how well that works. Uh, the cons, I think uh, I wish they would have uh, gone with something other than this uh, basket here. I mean, did, they did supply you with a battery strap. I'm not sure how you would use that. You definitely would have to clip away the plastic basket here, but uh, it doesn't look like there's a good place to run the strap maybe through here, but then that would cover up the US, USB port. So um, that's a con. Uh, the, batteries, the battery basket limits what type of battery you can use. Uh, also the battery basket um, seems to be fairly fragile, although you know it uh, held up for me over the time that I've been flying at approximately two weeks. Uh, the range is definitely limited with the SPI receiver. Um, but you could add an XM Plus if you wanted to get greater range. Uh, the other con is, the, you know, the canopy design is, is a good design as far as being able to adjust the camera, and it's pretty durable. But you can't really get an ND filter in the canopy without trimming away uh, some of the, the canopy here. So that's a con. Um, so overall, these are you know minor minor nits. So I do think that the Bushido is worth the money, and uh, for that reason, I'm giving it thumbs up. So with that, I greatly appreciate you watching my channel. 